today we're going to take a look at fixing error code A507 and or 607 on an Ego 56 volt zero turn Z6 mower. As you can see, at only 19 hours on the clock, I'm receiving error A507, which causes the blades to turn on for a brief moment and then shut off before flashing the error code. Start off by disconnecting all of your batteries before you even begin. This lets the capacitors in the boards fully discharge and guarantees no power to any of the components. To do this job, we're going to need only a few tools. A T20 Torx driver, a 6mm Allen key, a 13mm socket, an extension, and a ratchet. And not pictured is a Phillips head screwdriver. Start off by removing the four T20 Torx screws that covers the seat support bar and the adjustment knob. If you take a look in the user manual, it says this error code means right blade motor PCBA failure. Error code A607 would be for the left blade motor, so you may see either error. The fix is practically identical for both. Once it's removed, set it aside. Next are the four 6mm screws holding the seat on, and the cable clip. To detach the cable clip, just squeeze and push it to the right to unclip it. Adjust the seat all the way forward and then get the two screws at the back. While it is possible to remove the air ride bladder without removing the seat, it's just much easier to remove the seat. Once all four screws are out, go ahead and just lean the seat forward. No need to fully disconnect it and remove it. Next up are the four 13mm bolts under the bladder. You'll have to remove the rubber out of the way to remove them. These are some of the very few bolts you could actually get to with a drill or impact driver, but the ratchet works just fine. Once all four bolts are removed, go ahead and move the bladder out of the way. I'm only just now realizing this as I'm watching my own video, but the front two bladder bolts aren't actually required to be removed. You could just remove the two bolts on the front support instead, since it has to be removed to access the control box. Oh well, it is easier with the bladder removed in my opinion. Once the cross support is removed, Go ahead and remove the five T20 Torx screws holding the control box cover on. Do note that removing this cover claims it will void your warranty. There is a sticker on the front of it that gets torn when you remove it. However, if you're watching this video, I assume you either already don't have a warranty or the warranty has somehow failed you, so probably doesn't matter. Before we touch anything, let's go over what we have right here. 
At the top right, we have A507's board for the front right blade motor. Middle would be if you had a 52 inch stack, it would be the middle motor. Top left is A607 or left blade motor. Back left is left drive motor and back right is right drive motor. They're all the same board. So if you just had four of the same board as spares, you'd always be good to go. To remove the board, use your fingers or a pair of pliers to unclip the white connector holding the USB-C cable in. Then gently disconnect the USB-C cable, setting it to the side. After that, remove the four Phillips head screws holding the electrical connectors on and set those cables to the side as well. Securing the board in place are five screws, three T20 Torx, and two Phillips head. Go ahead and remove those as well, and you should be ready to remove the board and its heatsink. One thing we'll need to do is move the jumper connector over to the new board. It just easily unplugs. Go ahead and gently place the new board in to its respective spot. I recommend being smarter than me and putting the frame screws in to the board before setting it in, as you're about to see me drop these screws a few times. But insulation is simply the reverse of removing it, so go ahead and put them all back in and connect your wiring. I'll go ahead and speed this up by 300% or 3 times so you don't have to suffer watching me struggle to screw in a few screws for the next 4 minutes almost. It would really be ideal to have a magnetic tip screwdriver, but it's not really a smart idea to use one when working with electrical components. With everything connected, I do recommend testing it to make sure it works before reassembling things. So go ahead and pop at least four batteries in, put your foot on the seat to activate the pressure sensor, power on the mower, and see if the blades work. Wow. 
once you've verified everything works, it's time to go ahead and put everything back together, which only takes about 9 minutes according to the length of this clip. I'll speed it up a bit though as we go through our outro. As for what caused this failure, I honestly can't say. What I can say though is that the main chip on the center of the board was about 30 degrees hotter than any of the other boards, which would make it easier to identify which one failed if you just, you know, touch it. This is a fairly simple fix for around $120, and I'll link the part in the description for you guys to make it easy to order. It's a shame that this happened at only 20 hours, but it seems this is a rather common and unfortunate failure for these mowers. As always, if you like the content I'm putting out, make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to stay up to date with all new content as it comes out. And that's all for today's video. I hope that you found it helpful and or informative. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.